So, hey, te homines, I am Ruminous, and today we are talking about the gameplay aspect of growth. Now, because sheer repetition is boring for most people, growth is often implemented into games. Growth is a change in a game, no matter what it is. Doing the exact same thing is not appealing for most people, which is often why games will add minigames, features, side quests, and things along that nature. They could be more or less, could be big or small, simply whenever the game changes from its normal baseline nature. I mentioned that stagnation is boring, but some people would look at MOBAs and multiplayer games which tend to have little growth in the gameplay, but there is growth in them, and I will address that in a little bit. What I mean by repetition is that people don't like doing the same race, with the same car, on the same track, over and over and over and over again. Welcome to the club, pal. Failed the job and lost oh, all your equipment. Even tell us. You failed the job and lost all equipment with you. They brought with you. That's dog shit. Great, I didn't yeah, fail. $10. I did a very. I I was able to meet the ghost. I had a good chat with it. I may have said some things that pissed it off. People typically want new costumes, developments in the story, different like combos, lighter, better skills, all hours. that kind of thing. Growth can be changes in the enemies, in the gameplay, in the story, in the characters. Anything that changes the core of the gameplay or the motivation to play is growth. Growth is not limited to only increases in new stuff, it can also be when features are taken away or missing. Limiting players with specific challenges or permanently removing teammates will change how the game is played, and is thus growth. No guns, all, g all fists. Guns down, fists up. Right in the boat, took us. I said no guns, sir. Sir, you were cheating. All right, these are simple mazes with collectathons. Something that's simple that my Neanderthal brain can get behind, because I am dumb and I hate this game, because I'm so bad at it. Humans are creatures of habit and routines. We tend to like to do things that we already know and have some experience with. This is why fighting games can still be fun after 100 hours, or puzzle games can still be intriguing. Even though I've moved the shining light a bunch of different ways in The Witness, there are now Tetris and color-based puzzles. When teaching, I had similar rubrics and formats for assignments, so the students knew how they were going to be graded and how to do the work. They didn't need to learn the rules each time, just once. Then you learn the rules of the situation. Games are no different. We like to become familiar with how the game operates, but we want new challenges or new parameters for the system. We don't want the system to go from investigating a murder to cooking a perfect pasta dish for the president, but we do like some change. This looks so beautiful. It wasn't so ominous and, you know, the name of the game wasn't The Rapture. But, man, this is just beautiful. You got that nice Aurora Borealis type situation going on, even though the colors don't match. You got these beautiful, like, pink, red, magenta lights surrounded in this will-o'-the-wisp graveyard. Growth in games should stick to the theme and genre of the game. People play walking simulators where despise a mission with a time limit. Likewise, shooters should probably not have a long mission when you need to clean the house before your parents arrive, and then you have to explain that the piles of pizza boxes that you've been saving are not because you're lazy and disgusting, but it's actually for a science experiment of some sort. Therefore, growth should build upon what we've already done. New enemies, new skills, new restrictions, new disabilities, whatever. Many games are a fine way to implement something new, like where Mass Effect 1 makes you play Dance Dance Revolution to get some loot. It's not really intrusive, it's not overly complicated, new paths and skills can encourage the player to try new methods or to progress in the game. Removing features, like in Lisa the Painful, can encourage the same thing, as they must rely on teammates or other skills to get done what they were already doing before. Now you must do it in a different way and use some of the other skills, aspects, or teammates that were in the game before. Growth is how to keep a player engaged. Speedrunners will play the same section over and 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 over again. But that is such a small percentage of people who will do that kind of nonsense. Jack and Daxter has growth by collecting all the precursor orbs and sending you into new areas. You're doing the same thing, but just in a new area with different layouts, different enemies, that kind of thing. Titan Souls has new bosses with different patterns and different weaknesses. It's still one hit, it's still the same game, but different bosses, different weaknesses, different patterns, different areas, that kind of thing. Binding of Isaacs resets your progress after every death, but how far you get and what you can accomplish in your fragile life is growth. Oh, Jesus, buddy, I just loaded the game! Give me a second. Now beat his ass! Oh, I'm boxing. I am not doing well. Even if the gameplay itself doesn't change, the story may change, which is also growth, as the story may be what's helping or entirely keeping the player engaged. 
Coder 1 shifts from escaping the planet to becoming a Jedi, then choosing to stay Jedi or becoming a Sith. I just got status effect to death. This man just stun locked me. <laughs> I just, just got pulverized. The screen wasn't even faded out yet and I just got ripped apart. Oh jeez, man. Resident Evil 4 starts as a mission to save the president's daughter, then quickly devolves into some sort of mystery cult, and then it shifts into me placing the daughter into a dumpster, hoping that she gets lost because she's incredibly annoying. Changes in the story may come with changes in the gameplay, like Uncharted 4, where the grappling hook is introduced when the main characters need to cross a large chasm, but that discussion is more for the mechanics video. Simply put, growth can be from gameplay, story, or both, but they don't have to be connected. Stories of video games have grown enough to entice people to watch other play, and we can't discredit that changes in the story can compel the player to keep their attention. As I mentioned, multiplayer games still have growth for this reason. Even though their story and gameplay don't change for some games, the different enemies, the different game modes, and the interaction with players add growth, as no session is ever thus the same. Right, this so piece of shit is locking doors. Oh. Oh, that's no good. Well, I can't enter any of these rooms. Oh, never mind, you just gotta keep moving forward, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, I'd like go with the B button because I'm a moron. I, it turns out to open doors you have to walk through them, not just click the mouse button. Some games do include upgrades or changes in gameplay, but there will be a point typically where the players reach the max level with the best equipment, and this is why core gameplay needs to have enough growth and interest to keep those players online. I, it's League of Legends, I'm not gonna like what I see. Yeah, I watched you play, this is why I never played it myself and why I'm forcing you to do this. because I don't want to play it. MMO games like World of Warcraft will have raids and special events for growth. MOBA games like League of Legends will reset the upgrades of the player to zero after each round. Wave games like Mass Effect 3 will have different difficulties and enough variation in the AI to make battles different and so on. Loot boxes and random drops try to help to make the growth slower by not letting players min-max, but this is also a hot debate due to gambling addiction and predatory practices. What constitutes as good or bad growth revolves around if the growth matches the theme of the game and retains the attention of the player. Growth can have good or bad sections, where changes in the story gameplay may not be good for a single section, but fine for the rest of the game. But what makes the overall growth good or bad is if the changes continually fit the game or not. As I mentioned before, many games and growth keep the game fresh, but sometimes these changes actually hurt retention as they can interrupt the flow or cause annoyance or fatigue. The DDR in Mass Effect 1 gets a little old by the end, and the lack of any real increase in the challenge leads me to just use other resources to avoid this game, as my Groove Juice has officially run out. Eat it! You punk ass bitch! That's right, disintegrate! God of War 3 has some poor growth in its gameplay towards the end of the game. In the beginning and middle sections it's fine, but the growth at the end kind of falters a little bit. The game gives new equipment throughout the game at reasonable points to get the player used to the new items before introducing even more new ones. Once you meet Aphrodite though, the game kind of rushes to completion. You get sent to kill a titan, which is easier than killing a god for some reason, I feel like it should be harder, but whatever. A new weapon is given with hardly any time to use it, and more importantly, I spent the entire game upgrading my other weapons, and now this one is weak comparably. Because you don't have any actual stats, it seems like it's weak, and it probably is weak, and you probably spent all your orbs, so there's no real point upgrading this when you have your other weapons that are better. Kratos ascends into the heavens at the speed of light, even though introduced before, this one is so much faster and takes so much longer. Oh boy, pick it up speed. Hit terminal velocity. Then, the most annoying part is the change in the action at the end of the game, where Kratos is in some sort of nightmare realm and the player has to wander aimlessly through past memories. This would have been nice if it didn't take so long and had a little more railroading to get the player moving. All of these new mechanics and changes to the gameplay feel underdeveloped and generally just fatigue the player by changing how the rest of the game had been up to that point. The vanishing of Ethan Carter never introduces new mechanics or gameplay elements along the game, but the growth comes along from the story and the puzzles to unlock that story. The puzzles are each unique in a unique area. None are the same, although they follow the same structure. You find the evidence to the incident, you logically arrange the evidence in chronological order, then watch the story unfold. Some areas are more difficult due to the terrain and how difficult it is to see where the evidence is, but the game at least gives enough snippets of the evidence that the player should be able to logically deduce how the incident might have happened. Even though the process for the each puzzle is the same, there is growth in the setting, the style, the complexity, and the theme of each one. There are problems with figuring out the radius of each area, as some are quite small and others are much larger, so there's a little inconsistency there. Don't worry guys, the Archmage is here! 
Skyrim has many issues with growth in its many stories, but I will focus on the guilds in particular. The player can be become the leader of each major guild in the game, as is common with the Elder Scrolls, but the growth in the story for Skyrim is just straight bananas. For the College of Winterhold, the player begins as a novice in the ranks. Then seven quests later becomes the Archmage. Where the others are masters in magic and specialize in a single school, the player can get through all eight quests with a rudimentary spell and be made Archmage without ever proving their magic skill towards the end. Although these games are designed to allow absolute freedom, it seems out of character for an institution with like five members to choose the guy who rampaged with a sledgehammer and the two quests with enemies to be the greatest source of magic knowledge. And how you deal with the dangers ahead of you. Usually with violence. Because the Sigic Order believes in you. They should. Look at me. I'm fantastic. Rage, and you alone I'm clearly dressed to impress. To prevent disaster. Of course Take I do. Because God forbid any of these people watching. who have any goddamn expertise in magic have any ability to stop what's happening. I it's all on me. I swear I felt something rather strange just then. You're what old and your bones don't work. Shut up. Oblivion, however, has wonderful growth for its story in the Thieves Guild questline. The Thieves initially mentioned that violence is not their style and will not tolerate any bad mouth of the organization. Without killing him, will be invited into the guild. Ha! That's no fun. I'll have it before sunrise. It's all about that murder. If the player is aggressive during a mission, they must pay a fine to get back into the guild. In order to progress, the player must sell stolen goods to the fences, which requires the player to steal and encourage an increase in their skills and their pickpocketing. In the later quest, the missions deal with more dangerous situations, and so some of the violence rules are revoked for certain people in the mission. In the end, when the player becomes a master thief, they have proven their mettle by selling a certain amount of goods, breaking in the castles, and the capital building itself. The story progression is imperfect, but the growth makes logical sense. Growth, in essence, should be related to the rest of the game, as adding random or unnatural elements can feel like you're padding the game, can feel like the game feels disjointed, the story doesn't match, it, like, things just kind of get weird at that point. So you gotta be careful when you do that. You gotta make sure that it feels natural, make sure that it feels real, and that it's not just something you're adding in there because you went, oh, we need another hour of gameplay. Just shove this thing in there. It, growth can involve additions and reductions to the gameplay, to the story, to the music, anything along those lines. Growth is a method to keep the play and play fresh, as people like familiarity, but they don't like stagnation, they don't like necessary entire repetition. Typically, that is an issue. There are people that do like repetition and racing games and fighting games and games along those natures do fail along with those lines, but if you notice, the gameplay pool for those games is not very large. There's not a very large audience for them, even though the people tend to like the repetition, it becomes an issue because people don't often go for those and people don't tend to go for them for that reason is that it's repetitive it takes a long time to learn and it's just not worth it though they'd rather just play a game that can be played by a general audience and so that's why growth is important for your general games growth can include changes in the story it can include also not anything necessarily new but taking old gameplay aspects that maybe haven't been used in a while things that are rusty and adding them back into new levels, making the levels more complex. Those are the types of things that can also add growth without actually adding necessarily anything new to the game other than changing the levels and changing the kind of overall structure. You still have a familiarity of the game is still the same, but you're still adding all those old aspects back into the game. Developers should be careful not to make the growth too massive or too complex at once or for too long a period of time as it can overwhelm or frustrate the player and thus lose the retention, which you don't want to do. The whole point of growth is to keep the retention and the players playing the game. Stagnation will quickly lose players in the vast sea of released games and keeping the levels or overall gameplay interesting is integral to keeping the players retained into the game and also interested in your next installments. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of future videos. If you have any constructive criticism, things that you think that I missed, games that you feel like have an honorable mention for good or bad growth, please leave them in the comment section below. We will continue on with this series with the gameplay aspect of Flow next week. Wale te omnis.